reporter. I follow people that do not want to be followed. What the? You finished, Mr. Brock. Is that a threat? You had to learn how to hide in plain sight. I'm pretty good at it. But you, you suck. Whoever you are. She's my sister, my twin sister from the same mister. Thank you so much for hiring Mona Lisa. It means so much to me, even though honestly she is the worst. She is the worst person in the world. Huge skank, terrible, but thank you. It means a lot. All right, ladies and gentlemen, welcome back to the Registered Nerd Podcast. I'm Snack Packs, and with me tonight is Webbed and Sparks, and we are going to talk about Venom. We all just saw it, and... Uh, we have some thoughts, uh, it, gentlemen. What did uh, what are your guys' first impressions of Venom? It was a movie. It it had pictures that showed one after the other, accompanied by sound. Um, I went into it not expecting much, and uh, I pretty much got what I expected. So you know. <laughs> well, I heard I had heard people either really liked it or really didn't like it. And I'm completely in the middle. I, it was like that was fine. Yeah, that I was, was I was just fifty fifty on it. I, I didn't I didn't like it. I didn't hate it. I liked it for what it was. I mean I, I I didn't think that it was like amazing by any means and definitely there were issues, but I'll say would you watch I did not dislike it. That's would you watch it again? Um Yeah. I don't think I, mean, I would. I don't think I would watch it just for fun. I, I think it was fine for one viewing, but... I think I would get drunk the with sequel. a group of people and watch it and just make fun of it while I was watching it. But see, that was the thing is I felt like as we were watching it, there wasn't even... It was so competent, it was so middle of the road, that I didn't feel like there was a lot to even make fun of. Um, it didn't feel like a Marvel movie, and that's because it's not really a Marvel movie. It's it's a Sony movie in association. And I will say, as far as a Sony superhero movie goes, I think this was the best. Like, that, the, the, But the, the bar's new, not set very high. No, the bar's set so low. The new Spider-Mans were both pretty bad. Obviously not Homecoming. We're talking about Amazing Spider-Man and Amazing Spider-Man 2. And then their uh, Fantastic Four was them too, right? Uh... Yes, yes. I think so. I, I think, think so. Sony has the rights to those. Yeah, and those were both those were all terrible. So this one they kind of like partnered with Marvel and Disney, but um I think Sony was still in the lead. And it was just kind of a flat line. Yeah. There were things that they could have expanded upon and made more interesting that they didn't really do. And really, I mean as far as the superhero movie goes, I was telling snacks when we were in the theater there that I thought I read that it was going to be like a two and a half hour movie and it was like an hour and 45 minutes tops. It was well, I, pretty short. I looked, that was the other thing too. And, and I mean, there's a little bit of spoilers here, but I looked at my phone um, when he became Venom and he did not become Venom until like 45, 50 minutes into the film. So the beginning, I thought it had such a slow, start i mean there was really until he became venom nothing interesting happened in the entire yeah. first part of the movie like the entire the entire first act which was a really long first act was just yeah. nothing that's one of my biggest complaints probably is the whole like him dating um what was her name ann or annie or something like that was his girlfriend i maybe? don't even remember that i don't know who that actress is she had absolutely no charisma None of them really did. They she, all played their roles really wooden. Yeah. Like none yeah. of them had very much charisma at all. Well, yes. at one point you turned to me, Snacks, and you were like, this is like a television show. And I was like, yeah, and not even a good one. Not even something on HBO, like something on Netflix that maybe they didn't put a lot That's of what I said. Into. I said it looks like a made-for-TV sci-fi movie the way they're acting. Yeah. Like, uh, no, that, like, I mean, the special effects were big budget, but yeah, definitely. Yeah, the, the effects were fine. Okay, but the, the, the only thing I'm going to say about the effects is that I hated the fight at the end because it, it reminded me of how Transformers is in the way that... You could barely tell. You can't tell who's who because they're both the same yeah. fucking color, they're both the same fucking size, and they're mixing with each other and, shit, and you're like yeah no it really suffered from that the end of the movie i was like what's going on when they were fighting there 
Um, and I was kind of hoping a little bit of spoilers here, but you know, Marvel has this repeated problem where the first Marvel movie, um, the enemy fights somebody with the same powers that they have. And I was kind of hoping that he wouldn't fight someone that was just a bigger, badder Venom. I mean, that happened in Iron Man, that happened in Captain America, that happened in, I mean, you name the Marvel movie, and in the first movie, Ant-Man, like, they fight, they fight somebody that has the same abilities they do. And it's really getting boring. And, uh, and that's exactly what happens in this movie, too. He fights a bigger, badder Venom. But that's uh, like a, that's like a comic book um, trope. It's a trope, you know. You know, like uh, the their arch enemy is always just like a twisted version of them. It's like if I right. had these powers but used them for bad, this is what I would be. If I have no morals and I have these abilities, I would be trying to right. It's just it's just world domination. domination. Yeah, it's just Marvel has been doing that exact same thing for over a decade now for the intro movies. They they mix it up when they start to get into movie two and three, but I don't know. Well, I was just they're hoping... doing it because it's based off of the comic books who have been doing that for right a hundred years now. Almost. Full full disclosure, folks. None of us are comic book experts, so if there is not even close, <laughs> we we're. we're... We really like film, and we don't really read comic books. I mean, I've we've all read one here or there. It's not like we're completely ignorant of it, but I don't know. Yeah. We like authors looking, nerd, but I mean, yeah. Looking at this just as a film, I got I got to go back to his girlfriend. Okay, you look at Captain America's uh, girlfriend in the past. You look at even Iron Man's girlfriend. Um, ant-man's girlfriend for sure they're all kind of interesting they're played by charismatic actresses um their relationship is cool this this woman in this film was just such a flat line i couldn't get over it anytime she was on the screen i'm like this is this is his great love i just don't see it she was a lawyer and that was it i don't know there, it was it was very weird casting i thought yeah, I don't know. I definitely think they could have done a little better on that too. But yeah, none yeah, of, I... none of the casting was particularly uh, interesting uh, it, for me at all. Um, the what's her name? The girl that plays uh, Mona Lisa on Parks and Rec. I, Parks and Rec. <laughs> I I could not take like she, whatever time she'd get on on be on screen. I just I would start cracking up because I'm like, I expect her to say something completely ridiculous. And... Yeah, she didn't strike me as the brilliant scientist type. No, um, no. I didn't recognize her at first, but after you pointed out that that's who she was, then I couldn't take her seriously. Because... Yeah. <laughs> well, even even the main villain is the. Um, he was on an HBO miniseries um, called The Night of or something like that that I watched. Yeah. Did you watch that. it? Yeah. Did you um, like it? I liked it fine. I, I thought he was better in that than he was in this. And this, I was going to bring up that exact point. I was just letting you guys talk about what you were going to say. I, I thought he was pretty darn good in the night of. Yeah. The, uh, the, the psychological changes you kind of watch him go through going through the event that happens. Like, right. Um, I thought he sold that pretty well. I thought he did a good job with it. Yeah, no, he, that, was, that was an interesting series mostly because of him, him and his lawyer. With this, it was there was just nothing there like he didn't he wasn't intimidating he didn't seem like he had that i I guess they were trying to sell him as like cold and kind of single-minded and trying to like you know save humanity in his his own twisted way purely for science like yeah lives don't matter it's all about the the science of it kind of yeah the the ends justify the means well i think yeah I, i think the 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 problem with the movie itself is probably in the reason the the acting is kind of uh, very wooden, I think, is because most of it's probably shot in front of a green screen. That whole se- that scene where they yeah. uh, uh, spoilers, by the way, for anyone who hasn't seen the movie yet. I mean, at this point, we're right. This is not a spoiler-free podcast, right? So no, no, yeah. it's not not at all. And um, if you want the great the great mysteries of Venom uh, to not be ruined, I guess go somewhere else. But right. Um, but there's that scene in the beginning, earlier on in the movie, where they have that first symbiote test on a human. They get the guy in the room, yeah. and he's got all the scientists sitting, standing behind him, and 
they all just kind of look like they're bored as the symbiote is murdering, like ripping through this guy as right, like ripping out of him and killing him. They're all yeah. like, I, I was like, shouldn't one of them, shouldn't they look a little more horrified by what they're seeing? You know what? Or, or excited or excited or Should, anything. Well, that's the whole know. movie though. The whole movie was just a flat line. You right. know what bugged me about that and correct me if I'm wrong, but um, they, they opened the door to that room. And then they, then he just walked in, and then they opened the symbiote's little chamber. Uh, that room didn't have like a an airlock, so I was I was wondering how do they get these symbiotes? Like how do they let the next person in? It's just sliding glass doors. I wonder if the symbiote has to return to its little container if it doesn't no. find a match. Well, no, the line just... they used in the movie was they cannot survive for very long in an oxygenated environment. Okay, so maybe so, maybe it will go back Venom into that. Got, well, Venom got pulled out of Tom Hardy, like you know, Harley, no, they can, or sorry, Eddie Brock. Okay, they, they can live for a while, but what I'm saying is, when they bring in the next homeless person, the the symbiote must have to go back into that little container because they don't have an airlock on the door. So, right, so what I'm saying right. is, if you just open the door, the symbiote would be out. It, it seemed like a really lazy set to me. This is really nitpicky. I don't really care about this. No, I did think nitpicky. about that because then, like, I when we were watching the movie, I was like, how do they get that dude's body out of there so the next poor right. person who volunteered can get it? Doesn't know what they're volunteering for, goes in there, and doesn't I wonder, see that person already laying on the ground. You know? <laughs> I, I think it must be that the um, that that. Just ignore chamber. the dead guy on the ground, okay? Right. Ignore the dead guy. It's and the blue blob there. that's Fine. like crawling around. <laughs> well, I, I think the the symbiote must go back willingly to that container because maybe that container is really cold or in vacuum or something like that. So I that once it goes back in, so. yeah, once it goes back in, they can lock it down. And but I I still thought that set seemed really kind of cheap. Speaking of the vacuumized containers. It bugged the shit out of me in the beginning of the film. And I know I told you guys, I mentioned it to you guys at the start, <clears throat> where they go, uh, they, the, the spaceship crashes and they're, they're searching the thing and they're like, we're missing a specimen, but we don't know which one. Yeah, that made no you, sense. You, what do you mean you don't know which one? How many specimens did you have? Process of elimination. Had, yeah, they had four specimens. <laughs> That line wasn't very well thought out. Okay, this movie had some of the Marvel humor. Um, they didn't attempt as much of it as I would say like an Iron Man or an Ant-Man. But there were two jokes that landed in the theater. And uh, one of them was when the the symbiote told him to jump out of the window of that skyscraper. And the next scene is him going to the elevator and it calls him a pussy. That was funny. I actually laughed out loud at that. And the whole theater kind <laughs> Kind of That's chuckling. pretty good. I thought that was good. That's and there, and and here's the thing: there was a second joke, and I already have forgotten what it was um, that landed. It was closer to the end of the movie. Do you was guys know about, which one? I'm... Was it about who he was allowed to eat? No, that was really close to the end. There was there was a joke before that, um, somewhere around the final confrontation, that landed too. So in the entire film, there were two. Okay. Since we've already gotten into spoilers, and oh, stuff. was it about like I'm kind of a loser on my planet, like you? Maybe, maybe that was the second one. I just remember we we walked out of there and I was like, wow, the theater only laughed twice. And like <laughs> you know, thinking about thinking about Thor Ragnarok or Ant, even Ant Man two, people were cracking up constantly in that movie. And in this, it was yeah. like they tried to go for dark humor. Well, another thing Snack said to me pretty early into the film was he was like, this needed to be rated R. It was during that fight in his apartment. Um, it, it just seems so toothless. Like every time the symbiote, the symbiote was taking people and throwing them through concrete and cutting them with knife arms, and it was just bodies hitting. There was no blood in this movie. It would cut. It would cut away like from wherever the the arm would right. go. Yeah, and like when he know. when Venom bit people's heads off it cut away. Yeah, it cut away every time. You didn't see any head coming off it, and, right. I, and I, that's what I was like okay it looks like he bit them but like what happened yeah. and then tom hardy's like you just bit that guy's head off and he's like i know and you're like but i didn't see it happen so right. yeah this off. this movie needed to be more like deadpool where it needed well, and that's the thing is that it. like it, it's not like it's not like they haven't proven that rated r comic book movies don't sell you know what i'm saying like you've got like You've got what Logan and Deadpool, Deadpool. one and two, yeah. and you know Kick Ass. 
Yeah, like, no, absolutely. They, but you know what? I, I have no faith in Sony's movie department. Oh, no, not they, at all. They almost always make the wrong decision, and I think making this uh, PG-13 was the wrong decision. Oh, definitely. Um, I think it would have definitely benefited from being rated R, especially, uh, again, spoilers, the end where they introduce uh, the sequel bait Carnage. of Carnage, and it's like... Yeah. Uh, there's no way you're going to be able to do that without making this rated R because he's a right. fucking serial killer. Yeah. I and mean, also, I mean, I'm, I'm kind of on board with Woody Harrelson, you know, being crazy. Yeah, I, I like Woody Harrelson a lot. I, I I wasn't sure about that wig that they put him in. Yeah, I wasn't sure about uh, that one. <laughs> that looked pretty ridiculous. That looked I, like he got I it think that's supposed to match like, the star. comic book hair. Oh, I'm sure... I'm sure it does, but you got to pull that back a little bit because he looked like um, his hair looked like who's the villain on The Simpsons that's always trying to kill Bart? Well, Sideshow Bob. He he looked like Sideshow Bob with red hair. <laughs> he just looked like Sideshow Bob. <laughs> I, you know what? I thought that. <laughs> that's exactly like what came into my head. I'm like that. I'm not going to be able to take him seriously. No, he's a great actor. I mean, if you've looked at um, True Detective season one of True Detective, and uh, he was honestly decent in Solo too. Uh, which yeah. I did finally see. The wiki shows Cletus Cassidy having like curly red hair. So, yeah, and I think um, one of the re- I mean, looking at it, I was like, I was like Woody Harrelson. That's an interesting choice. But then I saw that the director of the this film was the director of Zombieland. So I was like, oh, that makes sense. Oh, really? I I thought Zombieland was a way more interestingly shot film than this they're like okay what was the shot was there anything that looked really good in this movie okay so there wasn't all right (laughs) yeah i i don't i don't think there was to be like there was nothing from a director's point of view that stood out it was just very competent it was competent all the way through but i mean that that's why this is i don't know this is a difficult like conversation I said, I to didn't have. Dislike it necessarily, but I definitely, um, yeah. Like I, I, even like when he's walking through, well, all the scenes that took place in like the containment facility, I kept thinking like the whole facility just looks kind of cheap, you know? Yeah. Like, lazily done, you know? Like at least it was a real set. I will say at least they that is a real set. But it yeah, it didn't look like it was a um, high tech, you know, science lab. That whole scene, it, it kind of cracked me up with, with, uh, I'm just, I can't remember what the character's name, but Mona Lisa, where she was letting, <laughs> like we can just call her Mona just, Lisa. I'm just going to call her Mona Lisa, um, where she was letting Eddie Brock into the, into the facility. It's like, wait, you let him into the facility so that he could leak the secrets, right? Mm-hmm. And you show up for work the next yeah, day. Yeah, you just show up. Yeah, and it's like, no, you have to disappear at that like, point when you're going to be back town. Kind of well, even that, this is a the super awesome. super high security facility, and she rolls up and she just shows her badge, you know, like we would at the hospital. It's like you don't have something you have to scan or maybe a code you have to punch in. Like, nope, here's my badge. Totally not, you know, forged. Seems like anybody could get in there if they really wanted to. Right, and the fact that like how she like. And I'm not gonna lie to you, like the way she acted, like her face, um, right? She showed like, the, you look kind of suspicious. You look a little suspicious. Like that was coming the only... here in the middle of the night yeah, when you're right. not normally here, right? So, like, I think the didn't um... I see you leave like three hours ago? Why are you back here? Right. I think the uh, the best and worst scene in the film, as far as action went, was the car slash motorcycle chase. But I say best because Venom actually was able to do some cool things during it. But I say worse because, like, those SUVs would not be able to follow him in traffic in San Francisco. Like, you want to talk about edits, like, saving a scene, like, saving continuity. Okay, they're going into stopped traffic on the streets of San Francisco, and the motorcycle will be zipping through. And then in the next scene, the SUVs are just following him on a completely open road. It's like, the the fact, those guys never would have been able to stay with him for any amount of time. Right. But then, but he did, he was able to do cool stuff. So, I I guess, I don't know. I'm, I'm okay with, <laughs> I guess I'm okay with, I mean, yeah, the, the, it's, it's definitely like a, would you say a continuity or editing? It was, editing? It was, yeah, that scene was 
completely made up in editing because yeah. it, in one shot, okay, it's it stopped traffic. Like these SUVs are not going to be able to get through there. And in the literal next shot, they're just on open streets. And it's like he had to zigzag through all these cars. These giant SUVs would not be able to do that. That's just a that's not I a mean, major nitpick. But I think I think as long as you're getting your as long as the scene is good and, and keeps yeah. you invested in well, it, I, I don't like have I said, an issue with it. It was the most interesting action scene because he was you understood what he was doing. Like, oh, he got thrown off of his bike and Venom like sent out its goo and grabbed the bike and pulled him back to it or venom sent out its goo and like used that to slingshot him around a corner like that's what i liked about it is the things venom were doing like was visually readable um, yeah yeah um i mean i thought like i said i the biggest problem i had was probably just the characters themselves i just was very uninterested in anything that they had going on with them yeah, it was a difficult movie to stay invested with. At least it wasn't three hours long. Like, yeah. if, if this had been one of those movies... I mean, the story made perfect sense. It wasn't like Last Jedi or some other movies I've seen recently where it's like, why is the character doing this? I understood everyone's motivation. Um, the bad guy wanted to save humanity. The doctor wanted them to stop killing homeless people. He was an investigative reporter. He wanted. He thought this guy was dirty and wanted to expose him. I mean, I guess those are the only characters that really had motivation. Okay, Venom had motivation, and that I didn't understand. Um, I didn't understand why... Why did he have his change of heart, where he didn't want his race to come and destroy the world? He Like, they never had that moment where... It didn't seem like Venom had an arc. It seemed like all of a sudden he was just like, oh, you know what, maybe I shouldn't bring my species here and kill everyone. I thought about that because I feel like they didn't do the greatest of job of explaining it, but um, I think what they were going for is Venom kind of says something to the effect of, you know, I like you and also like I like this world and on my world I'm a loser. And they kind of played it as a joke, like a loser like right. you, ha ha ha. But it also is, means like, you know, rather than being the loser of the symbiote world, why don't I like... You know, be a hero here, or, or at least important here. Yeah. Maybe. It, it just wasn't very... And I mean, that's a perfectly fine... Mo I mean, maybe they could have done something where, like, oh, you know, he saw the love between um, between the, the two characters or something, but they just never really... It, it seemed kind of rushed all of a sudden. He was like, no, wait, I'm not going to destroy your planet. Well, and, and they kind of they kind of gloss over, like... They kind of gloss over everything. They gloss over Venom's motivations. They gloss over like how the symbiote like affects uh, Tom Hardy's character because he. They're like, "Oh, your organs are shutting down," and then Venom's like, "I can save you from that." And then they don't say anything about it. The movie ends, right. and at the very last second, he's like, "We need to eat, or else your liver will shut down." And we're like, Wait, "Yeah," what? and I, I think that's the thing. I was thinking if he um. As long as he gets, like, high-calorie intake, it right. sounded like, you know, he, he... It seems like just the symbiote needs a lot of energy to keep going, which I, I don't understand how they get the energy on the asteroid that they're... the comet that they're on, unless they're all in, like, hibernation. Like, I don't know anything about this race. Like, mm -hmm. Webb probably knows the most about the alien race. Well, I was just reading about it. I mean, if you go, like, into the crazy comic book realm of things it says that they were created by some sort of celestial dude as like a weapon blah 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 and like um he used them for like dominating worlds and then like at some point like something happens to the majority of them and they become like good so like they seek out like morally just hosts and seek to like be symbiotic with them rather than parasitic and like okay. amplify their abilities and venom kind of leans towards that but he's actually like um part of the corrupted group of symbiotes that's like you know evil and looks to be more like dominant and stuff, okay. so yeah i don't know how they would have explained that in the film but but yeah um... i mean that's just a lot it doesn't really 
talk about them in the wiki or anything ever being on an asteroid or anything. So that was probably just a plot device used for the right. movie. Right. Because they have a whole going world. Our solar system. Yeah, in the in the comics it says that Venom ends up coming to Earth via Spider Man because he was banished. Um, okay. By I think he was banished by the evil symbiotes for being too good, you know. Oh, okay. Like the good symbiotes, so they like you know said like fuck you, and they like you know put him in a prison and like some sort of pod or something, kind of like those containers in the movie. Got it. And like shipped him onto like or left him on some isolated planet. And Spider-Man in the comics happens to fight some other bad guy there and picks it up and brings it to Earth. Yeah. Okay. So he's so, like a good, good, bad hybrid he's, symbiote. Yeah. He's gotcha. the morally well, ambiguous and, symbiote. He's the morally, he's, he's the morally gray symbiote. And he's supposed yeah. to be a, an anti-hero like Deadpool or like Logan, you know, right. which is another reason why I think he'd be rated R. Um. Yeah, I don't know. I I heard some people completely raving about it, and I heard some saying, "Oh no, it's terrible." And I just feel neither. I just feel like, oh yeah, it was it was competent, not yeah. great. I I mean, like I said, I, I I'm not gonna go out and buy the Blu-ray when it comes out. But if somebody popped it in and we were all drinking and I wanted to just right. watch something to poke fun at. Yeah, I'd watch it again. It's not it's not horrible. I it it held my interest. Although I shouldn't say it held my interest because uh the first like 35 minutes of the film, I was like that first oh act my god, was do something. Yeah. yeah. No, it, it's and I and No, that was the worst part of the movie. They definitely needed to speed that up. I I yeah. realized they they did it cuz they wanted to connect the dots. The girlfriend worked as a lawyer protecting the corporation when the like spaceship crashed and all that related because the spaceship crash brought the symbiotes and blah 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 and then he fucks up and like ruins the relationship and like that's a big motivation for him wanting to like investigate further and like be redeemed but like that was ha- over half the movie or it was half the movie about you know it's like yeah. I thought you were totally right when after like because Sparks and I discussed this. We uh, were talking about uh, after six months after he lost his job, right? He's living in an apartment and it's like he's got no money, and we're like, "How's he affording this?" Yeah, and then how, we, and how there was he that, alive? There was that scene later on where he's like looking at the engagement ring, and uh, Webb whispers to me, "He goes, he goes." He's gonna throw that over the edge of the, of the bridge. I thought he was going to. I thought he was too, and he's like, "Should he just pawn it since he's behind on his bills?" Right. And then, and then, and then he puts it back in his pocket and walks away. I was like, "Oh, so what was?" So what was the point of that scene? What was the point of the scene? I mean, I think it was he was just pondering about what his girlfriend said to him when she was like, "No, dude, we're done." And he was like, "Well, fuck. Now I need to do something." So like, I get it, but like. They could have just done without that whole six month time period and pretty much just said like right, you know, right from the get go he's determined to get her back and he's gonna do it by proving that he was right in investigating the Life Corporation. Right. And or the well, Life Initiative or whatever the fuck they are. Well and and the six month period also <laughs> gave her time to like get a new live in boyfriend and you know but it was it was a bizarre jump, like fifty minutes into the movie, forty minutes into the movie. Um, and do they really need the boyfriend, even for his doctor skills? They could have just had no, some other doctor they be just the had one. A regular that's... doctor. That character was pointless. Um, right. And the fact that, and going back to the fact that okay, he hasn't had a job for all this time, and he still has twenty dollars to give to a homeless girl. Like it, it's been all over the news lately how expensive San Francisco is. It's the most expensive city to live in in North America. Um, it, that little, they're like, oh, he has this crappy small apartment, which I'll be honest, wasn't that crappy and small. And even if it was in Oakland. That's a three thousand dollar a month apartment, like best case scenario. Like in San Francisco, that place would be, you know, if you weren't a millionaire, you couldn't afford a place that nice. Well, maybe so, he had some savings from his investigative journalist he must, days. He must have. He didn't really seem like a guy who saves much, but right. Well, he was living in his girlfriend's apartment, so yeah. maybe he was banking all his cash. Who knows? Yeah, that's that's living the dream, man. Get a <laughs> Obama. Yeah, man. So is this? I mean. 
is this movie is it supposed to be in any way shape or form connected to the overall marvel cinematic universe are they I, gonna try and tie it in? i saw an article pop up my phone because it knows i like nerdy shit and there it was titled something about how venom relates to the um overall cinematic universe and i never opened it because that that is the only reason i could see them making this a pg-13 movie and my guess my guess is yes that unlike deadpool where deadpool kind of plays in its own universe that's Mm -hmm. more in the x-men universe um i i think this is supposed to be in the marvel cinematic universe even though it wasn't primarily made by marvel it was like i know marvel had their hand in it a little bit but i mean this is sony's show right now um unfortunately i think this movie could have been a lot better if it had just been pure marvel um Mm -hmm. i mean it still would have been a little bit toothless of course but maybe the humor would have hit a little bit more and maybe some of the absurdity because this is really a body horror film you know well and it, it it's like I, I keep I was thinking of like the thing, like these things that are happening to happening to him. And it, whereas the thing is so visceral and feels so real, this is like I, I don't know that he ever really feels the oh my god, my body has changed and like these horrible things are happening to me and I can't control it. He seems to just roll with it pretty quickly. Well, one of the things that's like you can make you can still it doesn't necessarily I mean, like I said, I would have preferred if it was a rated R move, but if it's gonna be a PG thirteen you can still have a menacing uh, villain or anti-hero. Like, Venom was too jokey in the beginning. Like, I could see if he was, like, in the beginning, he's, like, really, like, dark, and he's, like, I'm going to, you know, murder people and blah, 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 blah. And then, like, later on, as he's, like, actually, like, becoming more symbiotic with, with Eddie, he right, starts he's to starting kind of pick to have up some on, human emotions. On, on human emotions. That would make more yeah. sense to me. But, like, he starts off with making jokes, and you're like, all right, I guess he's sarcastic? And, again, maybe maybe that's how his character was in the comics. I don't know. And they're trying to line that up a little bit. But to me, that just seemed really, like, he's not, he's not very imposing for a big space alien that can transform and make right. huge claws and rip through buildings and shit. Yes. So. I, <laughs> I, I agree. So, okay. <laughs> this, is, this is a difficult movie to discuss. I know. It's, we have a lot yeah. to say about it. So. Yeah, the other thing I'm reading here, too, is Carnage is technically an offspring of Venom, which it doesn't explain in the wiki at all how exactly the symbiotes create their offspring but there's multiple offspring of venom that turn into other symbiotes and well, are I more know. bad than he is because they're like genetically unstable so I, I do know the answer to this in the real world context and the real world context is that venom was supposed to be this very dark anti-hero and as he became more and more good and a little bit less interesting uh marvel had to okay now we need a real evil version of Venom and bring them in. So Venom is kind of, I think to comic book readers, Venom is kind of like the almost reboot of the character where now he is a little bit more terrifying and scary. Well, it says in here that the original creator of Venom wanted to make Venom originally become Carnage, but because of his increased popularity, Marvel said, no, you can't like kill Eddie Brock and make Venom become evil. You have to like, do something else so they create a new said, character yeah so they created a like evil like demon spawn son of venom that bonded to cletus cassidy who's already a like mass murderer and okay. together they became crazy and it says the bond is more powerful between him than the bond between brock and venom symbiote because whatever they're both crazy so he's more violent, more powerful, and more deadly. So Venom okay. and Spider-Man didn't get along, but they had to work together to fight Carnage. Yeah. So they might somehow try to tie this in where Venom and Spider-Man have to fight Carnage. Yeah, and and that could be a decent film, but you gotta you gotta let take over. And I don't know if Sony's willing to do that. I know they have some sharing with these characters that like you know Marvel's getting paid for 
Well, sure Homecoming was definitely more in the control of like Marvel. No, Homecoming, Marvel. Homecoming was completely Marvel. Marvel. Um, yeah. Even though my, Sony and them worked out a deal, and I don't know what all what everything entails, but that's why Spider Man was one of the um, the last one. Okay, so Marvel, if if you go back in the day, the CEO of Marvel used to sell away movie rights like he was dying of cancer within a year. He just didn't care. I think Sony got the rights to make movies forever for Spider Man for one million dollars. Like that. I is remember so reading cool. something. They did get the rights cheap. Yeah. But- it, they got he he was just basically giving away movie rights and that's why um that's well, why this was Marvel, like this was like early 90s or something yeah and, so and but like, even back then though th- these were terrible decisions marvel made a lot of financial decisions and, and it's why they almost went bankrupt but you no know, it's like you can't you can't give away a, there was no time limit on it it was like sony you just now have rights for forever to make movies and that's why um the Marvel Cinematic Universe really had to do the Avengers because they didn't have Spider-Man. They didn't have the X-Men. They could get, you know, they had all of these secondary characters that used to be the B-team. You know, Iron Man and Captain America and all of those were were the B-team. They were always secondary to Spider-Man and, and, you know, Wolverine and stuff like that. But they took took the dregs, basically, and they made something awesome out of it. And it's just kind of funny that uh, you know, recently Sony struggled with the reboot of Spider-Man so much to make anything decent. Yeah, yeah. It, I mean, I I liked I liked the first two Spider-Man movies, and yeah, no, I, you're talking about the Sam Raimi. I'm one. talking, yeah, I'm talking about the Tobey Maguire. The yeah, those one, were fine. The third Especially one, for... the third one is is laughable, but watchable. Um, the third one had too many villains, and they also obviously messed up Peter Parker. Oh yeah, they they because who were the villains in the third one? It was um, it was Venom, and it was the Sandman, mm-hmm. and there was also the um, Green Goblin. You can't have three villains in a film; it just gets too bloated. Yeah. Like you can you can do a max of two if they're working together, but you really shouldn't do three. And and. You would think they would learn that. I think one of the new... I didn't see The Amazing Spider-Man 2. Well, I think the problem is is that they... The problem with having three villains like that is that... I mean, eventually you know that that the, a Spider-Man is eventually going to have to show have a showdown with like the Sinister Six. Like It's eventually going to evolve to that point, the, the, right. the, the Marvel movie. So they're going to have a, a Marvel movie or a Spider-Man movie where they have at least that many villains but the problem is i think that like they introduce them so late like venom isn't until like the last like 15 minutes of the movie yeah it's like oh i guess he's he's there now well okay. well that's a hard that's a hard movie to do because you're almost talking about now and and, and not that it's a but if you do a sinister six style movie i think you really have to do it like the avengers where the sinister six are the main characters of the movie Right. And Spider Man is the is the you know the thing they they have to get get over the hurdle that they have to overcome which they'll fail. But I think if you try to tell that movie from the point of view of Spider Man, and, and then you won't have enough time to characterize all six of these people. I think that's actually actually that's a pretty good point. I I, I feel like if they did that, it would make a little bit more sense. You probably get a better feel for the villains and yeah. Um, the problem um, the problem maybe, is is that's hard to execute so that's probably why that movie hasn't been made yet also oh, yeah. they, the freaking uh Andrew Garfield Spider-Man's were shit and that yeah, was they were terrible. what they were planning on stretching into the sinister sticks when they teased well, it at the end of Spider-Man 2 but well part of part of Sony's contract with the Marvel movies is like they they have to make a Spider-Man movie every so often or they lose the rights so the Andrew Garfield films were only made not because they thought they were going to make money, was so they wouldn't lose the rights to Spider-Man. That was the only reason. They're like, oh, we have to throw something out there, and then we might as well do a sequel. Um, I don't think they really... I mean, if they had succeeded, then great, but I don't think they were really concerned about... You know, they, they tease stuff like the Sinister Six, but um, I don't think they ever had... And that's the thing. is like It's really hard to plan a cinematic universe. Uh, Marvel makes it look easy because they've done this slow burn for 10 years and they built this whole universe. But I mean, you've seen what's happened with the DC films where they've tried to do everything all at once and it's just fallen apart. I mean, Henry uh, Cavill, 
just quit as Superman. Ben Affleck's like they're two movies into this, and Ben Affleck has said he's not going to be Batman anymore. Yeah. It's like, okay. Did, did Henry Cavill officially quit? Because I he did. He did. I, I heard. He did. I heard he did. He's going to be yeah. Geralt now. I know he's going to be Geralt, but I thought I heard something that said that just because he's going to do Geralt doesn't mean he's officially done with all Superman stuff. But I could be wrong. I, don't I know. mean, if I was him, I would you... cut my losses and get out of there. <laughs> right. Well, for when when you're talking What's about sad this... is he actually really looks like Superman. Yeah, you know I think I mean? like, yeah. he looks the part. He looks like a Clark Kent. If he had better lines, he would have been fine in it. Yeah, I think I is. think I don't think I don't have a problem with him as Superman. I have a problem with the just the direction the movies went and uh, yeah but he's fine i don't know oh, that's yeah that's a conversation for a different day because those those films have been com- managed and anybody that is just blind or a dc fanboy because i've got nothing against dc i really like batman i think he's one of the greatest superheroes ever you know contemplated by anyone um superman i think is a little boring just because of his nature where he's you know a little op but no, those those movies are done. If if you got to what you can't recast Superman and you can't do those movies without Superman and Batman. Like nobody, like Wonder Woman made a, a okay money. Nobody gives a crap about Aquaman. Nobody gives a crap about the Flash. Like that's just the way it is. The that's Flash my problem movies. with DC. To be honest with you, is Aquaman is like okay, so he's all powerful when it comes to the sea, right? But like, how many plots can take place in a aquatic environment? And right. then. Batman, yes, I agree. Like the depth that you could do with his character in like solo movies is amazing. You know what I mean? He's got so many villains and adversaries, and like even watching the cartoons growing up and stuff. Like, uh, I love Batman. Um, but the you problem can make is, a cinematic universe just he out of Batman. is he's a rich guy who relies on gadgets and his money to like you know fund his operation, and you pair him up against like you said, OP Superman, who literally is just like, uh, what can you do? Uh, Flash, you can run them really fast? So can I. Oh, and yeah. I can fly, and I'm impervious to everything, and uh, I can, uh, wh- whatever. Like, <laughs> you know, like... Yeah, it's, the, 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 it's the, weird. DC, the DC main superheroes are like the Greek pantheon, where they're gods. Um, Wonder Woman is this, this magical god. Superman has the power of the gods. Aquaman is basically Poseidon, um, you know, Flash is, is Hermes, and it's like, I, I think they don't resonate, whereas the new pantheon that Marvel has come up with, like, these characters are, are vulnerable, which makes them more human, which makes them easier to relate to, which makes us care more about them. Right. Like, the one that was the worst in um in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, I always thought was Thor, because Thor was a little bit OP, and he was a god, and his life was so different than ours. But now that in the last couple of movies, uh, spoilers for Ragnarok, I mean, he goes, his family is all dead. Uh, his home world is destroyed. Most of the um, refugees that he saved died in Infinity War, half of them at least. Um, he's become this really tragic uh, character where he has failed so much that it's like, I really like Thor now because it's like, okay, he's not just this above everything God type character. Like you've seen him, seen him actually have real trials and it's not just, he's fighting a giant robot and that's a little bit difficult for him. It's everything that he loves has been slowly stripped away, you know, and you see how he comes through that and is still a hero. Um, that's, I don't see them doing something like that with Superman. Um, it's hard. I mean, that's why like, Venom, I think, has potential if they can turn it around and fix some things that they did wrong with this movie, because having the anti-hero... Like, that's why people love Deadpool lately, I think, and right. that's people have always loved uh, Wolverine, is you have the X-Men and, like, each person has, like, their one power, right? That's, like... And um, there's a bunch of different personality types, but, like, Wolverine is just cool, because he's just, like, this, like... Fuck it like a mentality you know yeah and he, yeah wolverine doesn't play nice and he he's not all about like, family so and, with the x-men but he's there to and do mentally the right thing, he's like really a little crazy because yeah. like, he it's is so like deadful. he's th- yeah both of them because they're they can't be killed right you can't you pretty much right. can't kill them for the most part so what would you do if you were actually immortal and like you know, he's not necessarily a god, right? Like he's uh, 
made of adamantium. Oh, he suffers. Wolverine but, suffers a right. lot. Right, so, like, comics. he suffers, but he's immortal, but he suffers, and he has, like, his other powers, like, with his claws, where, like, he's... That makes him very formidable to fight against, but, like, overall, like... Except against well, Magneto. Oh, right. <laughs> That's, yeah. It, it, but one of the interesting things about um, talking about the x-men is there's i always thought there was this like giant paper rock scissors thing and mm-hmm. uh, magneto is is the uh rock to wolverine scissors for sure because i think there's a couple times in the comic where magneto like rips the adamantium just right out of his body yeah um but, you know but i think like the eddie brock venom thing could like kind of be that if they executed it it, it needs a different director and it needs more of an edge like it yeah. just and, it and just... definitely the r-rated thing could help i think you know yeah for sure and I, even, think... I was telling uh, Snacks, even at the end, like, he's discussing with Venom, you know, like, well, I'll let you eat people, but, like, only the bad ones, you know, and it's only like... Only really bad eat, people. Right, like, even Iron Man and, and um, like, Captain America, like, wouldn't do that, you know what I mean? They're right. Like, they oh, wouldn't Captain be like, America, oh, certainly not. Right, we're not going to eat people no matter what, but, like, for Venom, he's like... Yeah, we can eat people just as long as they're the bad people. You know what I mean? And he's like, then he's like, oh, we're gonna let this guy go. Ah, eh, you know what? Never mind. We're just gonna eat you. But in a movie about a character who's like, you know, lives in the gray, but is still generally kind of trying to do the right thing. But like the way he's gonna take care of the bad guys is he wants to eat their heads to sustain himself because he's a he's a an alien parasite. Like, yeah, no, these um, are these are dark ideas, and it was. They tried to touch on it, but yeah. Um, so, I mean, it, it, I will go see the next one. I will say that I'm just going to put that. Oh no, I'll I'll see the next one. Um, I don't like know I if I'll. I mean, unless we're doing it for this, I don't know if I'll see Carnage in theaters. I think it would be one of those. Okay, with seeing at home, um, unless you know, unless maybe it gets a little bit better of a reception. They they need a different there. I would say because this was just kind of such a flat line. That's yeah. That's well, and again, I I just I mean, just based on what I know of Carnage, there's no way you can do a Carnage movie without it being not. If he's a if he's a Woody a Woody Harrelson serial killer, that movie needs to be fucking brutal. That movie needs to show him killing people and in terrible ways, and you can't it can't be the same tone as this. You know, yeah. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's just... got to be a little different. Yeah. So, yeah, different direction, but but I like the idea of like only like after reading a little bit more. About him, it definitely made me more interested in like the potential for the story. So reading through this, like seeing a Venom, uh, Spider-Man team up because we have a a carnage with a. Uh, um, Sideshow Bob wig, and, you know. <laughs> I'll pay to see that. Fuck it. <laughs> sure, why not? Like I said, I it didn't turn Especially me off. Especially if from Snacks the... holds my hand during the the showing. Well, yeah. So I Venom, mean, obviously, Venom released on October fifth. It's already made ninety million, and it's done uh, one twenty seven foreign. So I guess uh, how much? What was its budget? That's what I'm trying to find out. Um. So what are we at? We're at uh, two hundred million. Let's say a little two hundred and ten million. Uh, one hundred million plus, but you got to add another one hundred. So it's probably already making. I think it's going to be a huge hit. Um, the question then becomes like is there even going to be a sequel i would imagine there will be because sony sony is just desperate for something that's a huge hit i mean yeah uh, can we talk about okay so this actress's name is michelle williams i want to see what else she's been in because she was terrible in this movie known for blue valentine don't know it apparently she played marilyn monroe i could see her playing someone who's kind of that vapid Oh, she was in Manchester by the Sea. I heard that was good, but I haven't actually seen it. Well, um, was she in Manchester by the Sea? I saw that. Was she? I, I, pro- looks like the main character. Yeah, she was the main girl in Manchester by the Sea. Well, the movie Manchester by the Sea was not really about a girl at all. Oh, uh, well, characters. she's on the cover art with the guy, so. Um. 
Oh, she's his ex. Oh, okay. Little side note, if you oh, want to she know was... about Man- Manchester she... by the Sea, the Casey Affleck, uh-huh. it, um, that's his ex-wife, and like they're broken up, and he's like trying to figure himself out the whole movie because their kids die in a house fire. Oh, okay. She and was it's in kind of Shutter his Island. She was in Shutter Island, which I really liked, but I, I have no oh. memory of her character. She, it's actually very reminiscent of what happens in Venom. They're pretty much split up, but still like hanging out together the whole movie, kind of like like okay. in Venom here. It's so like she has a tight she's cast. Like, yeah, she's like, I can't get back with you because of what happened in our past, but I'm gonna try to support you in what you're going through right now. <laughs> like that's literally what happens in Manchester by the Sea. She's been acting a long time. She was all the way back. She was in Baywatch in 1993. Um. I don't know who she played, though. Um, Someone in a bathing suit? She was uncredited in one edge at... at, uh, I'm sorry, one episode. And then she was Bridget Bowers in another. Hmm. So, I mean, if if this Wikipedia... Okay, she was like like a teenager in Baywatch. Maybe like... Maybe a preteen. So she was... This Wikipedia article is... Is is right. I guess it is set in the the MCU, so it yeah. actually it's just it's supposed to share the universe of Spider Man. So I did um, that's probably did like why that it's PG thirteen. It, so Right. I did like that they said it in San Francisco. Um I mean I know some of the plot did sense because of that, like him being able to afford that apartment. But I I get so sick of these movies being in New York, you know, or Washington D C. Like it is nice to see a different not that we don't see San Francisco. Ant Man was in movies. San Francisco. Oh, fuck. Ant-Man was in San Francisco, wasn't it? I completely oh, forgot about that. Yeah. yeah. They need to do... They need, like, a Midwest superhero. And, I mean, I might be a little biased because I'm in the Midwest, but um, none of them have... None of the MCU has been set in, like, Chicago or Detroit or... Even down in the South, like Atlanta, Miami. It would be interesting for one of these movies to kind of take place somewhere else. Um, I thought, for some reason... Oh, here think... you go. Right, right now, Snacks. There's an article on comicbook.com that says Venom producers claim sequel with Carnage might not be R-rated. Yeah, that's that's that'll be bad. We'll have things to say about a PG-13 Carnage movie. So, yeah, that just doesn't sound like a good idea. I don't know. Well, Sony and, has no idea what the fuck they're doing. So uh, maybe it'll turn out good, guys. So let's. let's... <laughs> We'll, uh, we'll air on the movie producer right? uh, Avi Arad. He says, when you hear Venom, forget Venom. When you hear Carnage, the only thing you can think of is R. But if you know his story, you really, if you really know the comic, there's no R here. He's a tortured soul. It's not about what he does. A tortured we ever, soul? We He's never a have to, killer. Right. We never have to show the knife going from here to there. And the blood pouring, what you have to show is what is the motivation. It's going to be great. It's going to be great. <laughs> That's what the producer is quoted as saying. In the <laughs> Jesus <time>. Christ. <laughs> so, there's oh. your answer, Snacks. Oh, that's just fun. That's fun. Uh, so, so we've, we've not talked about... the producers. <laughs> the producers that, you know... I mean, if it wasn't... Who would sexually assault young actresses and give us shitty movies. I mean, come on. They're doing a great job. Bang up job, Hollywood. God damn it. Well, we've talked... This is our third episode. We've talked about three things. We've talked about the original Star Wars trilogy. We've talked about the Disney era. And we've talked about talked about this. And it's kind of worked out perfectly because we had an episode where we could just rave about something we loved. We had an episode where we could just bitch about something that we absolutely hate. And then there's this episode, which is like lithium. <laughs> there's just there's just nothing. Like we're having to dig so deep to find things to talk about. Yeah. But, I kind of well, wish I could have raved with you guys on the first episode. But... Well, we we can always talk more about Star Wars. Always. I, I mean, I was. Yeah. I, I I feel like we didn't even say everything there was to say about the Last Jedi in our last episode. No. Um, that that podcast is two hours and thirty minutes long, and I got to the end of it, and I thought, "Wow, there's a lot that we left unsaid." Right? It's it's like, oh my god, we there was stuff we didn't cover. I think it's because we got into we really broke off and got into like the 
the minutia of a lot of things. Like, there's that whole segment where you guys are talking about... You guys were talking about the, the Star Destroyers for, like, 25 minutes. Like, <laughs> okay, um, can we... Are we... Are we gotta talk about this. there's just so many things that are wrong with it yeah. this, <laughs> well, well snacks when you and i rewatched um the film when we rewatched last jedi i mean we went through scene by scene and every scene had something that it was like well that's terrible or that's a bad decision or why are the characters doing this yeah. and it's like when you have a long movie because it is a long movie when you have a long movie where every every scene is wrong mm-hmm. you can talk about that forever i mean it never has to stop well and and and, um web and i we were talking about this earlier uh right after the film because we were we were discussing how like if it's enough to like there's some stuff that that there's continuity errors there's editing errors there's stuff that doesn't make sense in the plot like infinity war stuff with the infinity gauntlet like it's never really truly explained what the limitations of it are how it actually works So I mean, it, it's a kind of inconsistency. But, you're, but, you, but you're it's in, just you're, all powerful and it all works. But you're exactly so invested like in the intended. story that right, you're really engaged. That, that you're engaged in it, and you don't. It doesn't bother you. I, yeah. If it if it's enough to pull you out of the story, it, it it it's worth talking about. Yeah, and and now Star Wars is. I think we're not connected to these characters at all. And it's and trust me, it's not because we didn't want to be. Um, you know, we all wanted to love those movies and. Um, we're we're gonna get through one of these without talking about the Last Jedi. I yeah, don't know um, when it'll be. It'll probably be around Episode Ten. I remember uh, <laughs> when we can talk. Talking, I remember talking about to Paul, Last Jedi. talking to Paul right after the movie came out, and I said, "What did you think?" And he was like, "I was glad I was watching a Star Wars movie, but I was sad because I was watching a bad Star Wars movie." <laughs> yeah, and I was like, eh, "I guess I could see that." I was like, "I was just insulted by the whole damn thing." Well, I it was very it was very soon into that movie where I. Oh no! Everything's bad. Um, it was very soon into Venom that I everything boring, <laughs> which is a different thing. Like I said, plot wise, it was fine. I, I was guess. like, it, it's it, it was. It's like act, you said, it was a film. We it watched film. it. It was yep. watchable. Um, there were actors in it. <laughs> they acted. They acted. I I, I think there were Tom Hardy special effects. Tom Hardy kind of took a, a couple pages out of Shia LaBeouf's school of acting. I think. Cause the way it was not talked, his best performance. Yeah, I, I mean, he was mumbling and, like, sputtering. And I guess it's like, you know, you're, like, trying to convey that he's, like, you know, struggling with being, like, having this parasite in him. But he talked like that at the beginning of the movie, so I don't buy that. And and Tom Hardy usually does a pretty good job of, like, disappearing into these characters. And, you know, I've seen him in a lot of different things. And um, he's way better than, like, Leonardo DiCaprio or someone like that, where every time you watch him, you're like, oh, that's Leonardo DiCaprio. Tom Hardy really can fall into a character, um, especially in, uh, what was that movie they did where they were out out west and the bear raped Leonardo DiCaprio? Um, oh, um, fuck, now I can't remember what it's called. He was, he was so good in that, like, he should have gotten all the Academy Awards, and I didn't think Leo deserved any of them. But, like, in this, he was just kind of... A, and he was consistent with the character i'll say that i just i don't know i i didn't love it the revenant that's what it was the revenant yeah is he revenant um okay so a couple other things i'm reading clintar is what the symbiote's actual name is and um they were actually their master his name is null k-n-u-l-l um he was defeated by thor you said he's a celestial uh not quite he was fight i guess he's like on the same level of power null okay. is he's but he's like an evil primordial deity okay and um one time pretty... i went down that wikipedia hole where i wanted to oh yeah the power it's... was there's like the tribunal above that one of which the theory of that what's his name stan lee's character in all these movies is the one above all just kind of watching things I've like read that's that why theory he's always before. there which yeah. i think is kind of interesting yeah um so it says Thor actually defeated this guy who created the symbiotes, and then they eventually like landed on a planet, and like they imprisoned him in the middle of the planet. And the Clintar in their language means cage, so their planet is actually a cage for like for null, for null. Okay. <clears throat> and then all the symbiotes that are in the comics appear to be 
offspring of Venom. All the symbiotes that are on Earth are okay. like offspring that would of Venom. Be, that Even would be Riot, fun. who okay. in, in this movie they say is like... He was the, his own guy. Yeah, is like a leader of, you know, these evil Clintar. Like he's, um, he's a son of Venom, Venom, not, yeah. Well, they always sure. they always have to change things because the comics are so expansive, and you know they go on for. Well, right. Stuff and can't show no, it into a movie. I'm, I'm just I'm saying, not. there's definitely some differences. And stuff, yeah. So. Oh, for sure. I mean, that's true of all these films, you know. Well, any other closing thoughts? Um, no, not really. What anything? Uh, anything on your guys' radar for uh, video games or or even movies? coming up or stuff that you're like playing or doing right now um i've been doing that playthrough of witcher 3 i finally got around to play it i love it yeah I, um, i'm still stuck i'm like i said i just got to care more in uh, in my playthrough okay i'm at skellige i kind of hit a wall when i got to skellige where i was like i need to take a break before i start a whole new you know area yeah um yeah. i was just talking about witcher 3 with snacks tonight and uh i definitely I need to go back. I haven't played the expansions. Like, with the, like, I have them all yeah, when I got the game. So, well, I told you I bought the game, and then two days later it went on crazy sale, and I could have got the game and all the expansions for like $15. I paid 50 bucks for them. I was a little disappointed. It was literally like two days after I bought them on Steam. But, yeah, other than that, I don't know. We're kind of getting into this. Uh, this time of year we get into the stuff that they think is Oscar-worthy, um, which isn't so much like the big-budget you know, Marvel movies and Star Wars movies and stuff like that. It's going to be more smaller budget um, quality films, which is fine. And then we get into January where there's nothing. Yeah. So, well, I think, yeah. I think uh, coming up in the next two weeks or so, uh, I think our next episode will, will focus on a horror film or multiple horror films. It's the time of year for that. I would love to do chats about horror movies. I would yeah. love to do evil dead. Um, we could we could always do the thing. Um, well, I mean, I, I kind of we can even uh, do a review of Halloween because uh, I have not seen Halloween in so long. Yeah, I'd probably I'd have to rewatch. You know, they're I, doing I mean, another one. I mean, the sequel. They're that's doing another on the nineteenth. Oh, the one that's coming out now. Yeah, yeah we could yeah. Do, we could do that for sure. I, and can I? I just want to say that I think it's hilarious that that the they're just like cutting out the continuity from Halloween 2 onward and just like being like nope this is the sequel to the original movie and nothing else you saw counts didn't they do that with Psycho 4 I, have you seen all the Psycho films I I've thought? only seen I've only or... seen the original Psycho um, oh, okay. uh, maybe horror maybe is an area where I'm going to struggle with because I don't watch a lot of see I movies. I don't watch as much as Snacks Snacks watches the most out of all of I, I, I love have... I love for all, anyone listening, the one or two people in the world that are listening, um, <laughs> I love <laughs> horror movies. I watch every one of them, even the bad ones, um, generally speaking. I think you especially like the bad ones, honestly. Uh, well, sometimes bad Sometimes, sometimes, bad, sometimes horror bad horror movies can be amazing. good. Like, sometimes yeah. they can be good. I, you like them when they're so bad, they're good. Like, it's I, so bad, you're just, you're more entertained but, than horrified. Right. But on yeah. the other hand, on the other end of the spectrum, when they're good, they can be good, too. I mean, you look at um, The Thing or Alien or something like that. It's like horror can work both ways. Um, like, I, the Evil Dead movies, I absolutely love. And they're not, they're creepy, especially the first time you watch them. Until, well, you get into Evil Dead 2 and it kind of becomes more kitsch and more hokey and more of a comedy because they realize that was something people liked about the first one. But, like, Bruce Campbell is just so damn interesting in those movies and the crazy shit, like, anything can happen in those films. And that's what I love about them. Um, and then I like Rocky Horror Picture Show just because I think Rocky Horror Picture Show is a great Halloween movie. It's just so bizarre. Yeah, I mean, like I said, I. I I would say my, my favorite one is probably The Thing. Yeah, well the thing is, is damn near a perfect horror movie. I mean it has it has body horror, it has gore, it has psychological excellent acting. Webb, have you seen it? The original John Carpenter's The Thing? Yeah. 
Well, John Carpenter's is. Yeah, the, I like it. Well, I know, I know, I, I know John Carpenter's. Good. I mean, the original John Carpenter's yeah. the thing because they remade or they did a sequel. Or the thing prequel. from another. They did a prequel no, no, I saw the original. in 2011. Yeah. I mean, I mean, I mean that one. I don't mean and you the know, original. You know, original. I never saw the prequel. I never saw the prequel. I heard that it was like the same movie. Uh, it it is like, the same movie. Almost soft reboot. Like the same thing happens at their camp almost exactly. It is the same movie except executed more poorly. Well, yeah, you're not you're not gonna outdo John Carpenter. With the same. You're not gonna do the same idea as the biggest. Man. I mean, I, I'm. I guess we're already starting to talk about our next week's or next <laughs> episode or whatever. But, That's fine. Uh, the biggest problem I have with it is just because it it had it had been in the making of the movie like when they were doing it they were like oh we're we're gonna have all this uh these practical effects we're gonna try and recreate you know like the magic of that in this and i think at the last second they got scared like the studio got scared or something because right there wasn't a single there wasn't really any practical effects in that movie it was all cg and i was watching it and i was like where the fuck why the okay. fuck would you do this Practical's more expensive nowadays. It's way I, more expensive uh, to do good practical effects, even though. And I know like that. that it's just, it's it. just, it's like, don't, don't, uh, don't, don't be such a cock tease, you know. Do you know? <laughs> do you remember in the in the original thing when that dogs you cut out? Uh, in the original thing when that dog's face. Opened, yes. All the little petals of that flower are dog tongues. That uh, that's the most creepy. Fu- that like. The thing is just nightmare fuel. Like, it is just completely nightmare fuel. The fact that it can be completely stealth and you can think, like, oh, it's just a regular person right up until the moment where it gets you alone and just, like, takes over your body and your DNA and all works. I'm not exactly sure how the thing works. It seems to absorb things and be able to mimic them. Well, that's why it, like, resonates with you because, like, it stays with you longer because it's not just because it's a fucking monster movie because that's... Yeah. It devolves into that kind of at the end of the movie. But... There's always that, like, that the whole movie, you just have, as soon as stuff starts happening, you have that sense of dread, and it keeps yeah. going through the entire thing. And every single scene, you're like, okay, if the first time you see it, you're like, okay, what's going to happen next? Because such crazy shit happens that you don't know what to expect. Right. No, the the thing is a great body horror. If you I... what it could have been like, watch the thing. I'm not generally a fan of horror, but I like the thing a lot because it's like, because of the nature of how the monster works. It's like, you're like, I like like whodunits kind of things where you got to figure stuff out. So like, that's why I liked that because it was like, oh yeah, the, the whole is movie it? is like Who that. is it now? Like I want, I got to know. Yeah. So you're is like, it, I, I got to keep watching. People now? Yeah. I don't generally like horror, but I got to keep watching this movie because I got to know who the fuck is, who the, who's the thing? God damn yeah. it. That's and then at the end of the movie, days. they don't like it. Just ends. It ends on that like. Well, well, that's a John Carpenter thing, you know. He made a trilogy of movies called the Apocalypse Trilogy, and that's one of them. <coughs> um, and the other one is in the Mouth of Madness, and that's one where the writer is. Um, he writes all everything he writes in his horror. He's like Stephen King, and everything he writes like becomes true. Like, he's basically, like, channeling this other dimension, and as he writes things, it, it brings all that into our dimension. And then there's another one where the, uh, long story short, they open up a portal and they bring the devil into our universe, and people in the future send back a message, like, into someone's dream. Like, they can send messages in the past, but they can only send it into someone's dream. And it's like, you have to stop this from happening because it basically is destroying the like the world is dead and uh it's called the apocalypse trilogy i forget the name of that one i'll have to look it up but um yeah those would be interesting ones to all to watch and talk about because they all have a lot of things in common the thing was the most successful one which is kind of funny considering it wasn't like financially or critically successful when it first came out but yeah. i think it, everyone's reevaluated it and been like that movie was amazing you know but yeah. that came out in a year where there were a lot of other great films yeah. All right. Well, Venom. Yeah, Venom was a movie. <laughs> yeah, that we um, saw. What about uh, anything? Anything coming up, uh, games wise, coming out that you guys are looking forward to? Games. Yeah. Uh, mm. Super Smash. So yeah, Super Smash for sure is on my list. I I want to see how the 
the game is reviewed because I would definitely just for nostalgia purposes get Which that game? on the Switch as well. Uh, Pokemon, uh, Let's Go, Pikachu, or Eevee. They yeah, look, no. they look like they're like almost like a rebooted version of the Game Boy games. I think that's the idea. Game. I think they're supposed to play really similar to the old Game Boy. So games. just for nostalgia, I would get it. I I did buy Mario Party, and that oh we'll have to okay. we'll have to play Mario so, Party. Yeah, yeah. We'll I to... I bought it just on you know for like when we all get together. I thought it'd be kind of yeah. Fun. We'll have to. Yeah, that's it's an excellent party game. Um, yeah, we'll have to get together and play that with the wives. So there's only like four maps on it right now. So hopefully, I know that's a little DLC. disappointing. Yeah, but there's definitely going to be DLC. I I wanted a game that would be good for a party game because well, I have now a there's that for yeah system for parties. Now there's that. There's Mario Party. There's um, there's always been Mario Kart. Mario Kart is a I great have Mario party Kart, game. Yeah. Yeah, and then and then uh, you'll have when, Super Smash. So. When Super Smash comes out, so there's going to be a couple. I I have Mario Tennis too, but I don't. I don't know. It's okay on on the Switch. It. I really wanted Mario Golf. I was always a bigger fan of. Golf. But what about what about you? Snacks? Any games coming up that you've been looking forward to? Um. Well, Mega Man Eleven just came out, and I like it a lot. Um. Looks great. Yeah. What system did that come out on? It came out on all of them. It's on did Steam, it come out on, it's on Switch? PS4. I think it's on Switch. Oh, I may have to pick that up on Switch. Um. Yeah. I would say the biggest it's, issue it's I have. Better than it, it's better than Mighty Number no. Nine. Oh my God, Mighty Number no. Nine. <laughs> I could I could write a book about that. How terrible <laughs> it was. Oh, Jesus Christ! I had such high hopes for it. I was just I was really like. Um, all right, I'm ready to play not Mega Man, and it's going to be great. And then it came out, and like I got delayed, delayed, Sweet delayed. Man. It came out, and I was like, that's it? And I think, but I think the best part about Mighty Number no. 9 is that without it, we would have never got this game. That's, right, because it, it made them I realize there was, made them realize there was, realize there was, there was a market for a, Absolutely. a, a, a 2D uh Mega Man game is like still you can still make money off of it. Yeah, for sure. Well, like I said, I think in uh in October we'll do some horror films. We'll talk yep. about that on our next podcast. Yeah. And then after that maybe we can do a do a video game episode. Yeah. 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 One other game I'm hoping gets good reviews cuz I'd like to see what happens with it is Fallout 76. So. I'm that's I am very excited about Fallout 76 because I figure that's a good one we can all play together, you know. Yeah, I, I like the idea of us potentially co-oping the world of Fallout. Yeah, because I love Fallout and Skyrim, and I'm a Bethesda. I'm fan, I spent so. way too much money. If I look at my Steam library and how many hours, it's really sad, especially when you consider that I've beaten so on the PlayStation 4. So I, I still haven't even done. Through. Yeah, I still haven't even done all the expansion content from Fallout 4, but... Um, the Fallout 4's did... expansions were... The Nuka World was my favorite. Nuka, Nuka, Nuka World, World is cool. Is and I didn't even finish that, but... Yeah. Um... Um, I did just because I wanted the armor. I've got a... I built this giant warehouse where I have all my armor in the game. I've got 60 sets of power armor, and I was collecting one of each kind, so I had to get those... Uh, I had to find all those caps to open up the power armor there. Yeah, I almost have enough for that from when I was playing it, but I took a break. Yeah, so, no, but we're de- we're definitely going to play it. Yeah. a lot of Fallout seventy six. So we'll see. I'm hoping it gets good reviews. We'll see, see what happens with it. Yep. So, all right, all right, folks. Well, well we can uh, wrap up there. That's uh, that's a wrap for us. Thanks for listening, and uh, look forward to our next episode where we talk about horror films.